So you're deciding what faction you want to join in New World, and you don't know what it means or what the pros and cons are. So basically what a faction is in New World is like a nation, and there's three nations, and you get to join them, and it determines what you do in PvP. If you're on one nation, then you are anyone you see on the other nations are an enemy. And if you flag yourself for PvP, you can fight them if they're flagged for PvP. I don't think you can attack someone from your own faction. So like if you're flagged for PvP and someone else from your faction is flagged for PvP, I don't think you can fight. I haven't tested that though. So the factions are the Marauders, the Covenant, and the Syndicate. Marauders are basically like, as far as the lore goes, the Marauders are like the hyper-aggressive people. Uh, the Syndicate is like rogue assassin type of vibe. And the Covenant is like the Holy Paladins, basically, if you're into the lore. Uh, so once you join a faction, you will be able to help fight in wars and help gain territory. And so some people wonder, like, oh, well, I want to join the strongest faction. Who's the strongest on my server? Well, that's going to change over time. But to get an idea of that, if you want to know, like, who's the strongest one, it's as simple as opening your map. You open your map. These are the factions and how much territory they control. So on my server right now, the I think this is Marauders is green by default. You can click it to see. Marauders, okay, are doing the best, followed right behind by the Syndicate. And the Covenant is just apparently garbage. Apparently Covenant is not doing too hot on this server. So if you want to join the strongest one, you would join the Marauders, or you could also join the Syndicate, but Marauders would be the strongest on my server just by looking at the map. You can also look at these bars to see what's going on as far as faction control and stuff and upcoming invasions and wars and all that's good stuff as well. So now beyond that, what else does like what else happens with factions? So what another thing about factions is that you can do faction missions uh, in your territories or in enemy territories. And what that will do is that will make it so if say I go into an enemy territory and I do faction missions there, it will weaken their control of it, allowing us to attack or invade it. Another important part of being in a faction is that you can do faction missions, which those faction missions that undermine them like that, you can do it to reinforce yourself, whatever. But they give uh, faction currency and like faction experience, I think is basically how it works. So you level up your faction level or something like that. And then you get access to better faction gear, which gives you huge uh, gear, what do they call it, power spikes. Uh, once you hit the next levels of those and you can unlock them and you can you know buy better faction gear using the faction currency you get from the faction missions uh, that is pretty much the same no matter what faction you join uh, but I guess it might be easier if you're on a strong faction for PvP missions maybe I mean I don't know I, I feel like that's not a huge uh, disadvantage or advantage to be on a strong one or a weak one but that is a huge part of being in factions and that's something you should know about what's going on with factions and another important part about why it's honestly very tempting to just join the strongest faction and not be like, I'll join the underdogs, uh, which is kind of a shame because it makes the underdogs get weaker and weaker and weaker, is that uh, being in control of more territories gives, I mean, I, I don't know the scaling of the benefits, but it gives kind of ridiculous benefits, even if they're only minor, uh, where it makes it so that you get more... Um, materials when gathering your rng when getting loot is just straight better you're more likely to get better items more items etc when you are crafting you will get higher quality gear uh it, it is some huge bonuses like that oh no and then the last one i almost forgot is apparently you will straight up do more damage in pve so fighting enemies killing wolves and alligators or going in dungeons you will just straight up do more damage the more territories that your faction owns so that is another big reasons why you you'll want to look at the map and consider which is the strongest faction when you join unless you really have a, a motive of like oh i really like the lore of one and that's really a deciding factor for you but if you're just looking for straight gameplay mechanics uh you're gonna to want to be in the strongest faction you can open up your map to get an idea of who the strongest is another thing worth mentioning is that uh, companies within factions, so there's like a company is basically like a guild from another game or a clan if you're familiar with other games, other MMOs, and y different companies can like initiate the wars and whatever, but I think anyone from your faction can join in on the war if they don't have enough people, so the wars will always be big. And then uh, there's some other stuff that I actually don't know pretty much anything about, I just read about real quick, 
at one point, and that was uh, something about something about being in charge of something basically. And it could even it could pick a it picks it at random, so you may get a company of one guy being I don't know somebody who actually knows this will watch this video and be like, "Rude Car doesn't know," you know, whatever. Okay, I don't know right now. I just you know it's closed beta, just right near the beginning, but. Uh, and then that one will just like control the war or something like that, but other people can join in so it can act, it, it could pick a guy who has a company of one person and he's like I don't know if he was trying to say he was the leader or what I haven't experienced that part of the game yet uh, But the main thing was even if that happens other people from his faction can join so still like Fill out the ranks and make it actually a big war so you don't get into like a siege or whatever it is And it's just like one guy versus 50 because it picked a guy or the company of one or that was my understanding of it I actually don't know exactly what I'm talking about on that But there's something like that to know about and uh, I'm just not sure uh, Maybe if I know more about it later, I'll make a separate video for all of that stuff But it's worth mentioning that there's some mechanic like that and another thing worth knowing about is the upcoming wars tab on your map. It tells you when there are wars happening really far ahead of time. Uh, you get to know the exact time and date and location so that you can prepare for it and see if you can get involved and get into those wars one way or another and participate in some fun PvP. So that's something good to know, know about. And this is something sort of related but unrelated. You should also know about your territory standing rewards. Uh, since you're going to be doing these missions and all these things, you'll get territory standing, which is uh, per area, as I understand it. So, like, right here is Monarch's Bluff, which is, uh, I don't know if it's all of this, or I guess it's this whole one right here. Yeah, it's this one right here, I'm assuming. And uh, as you do any missions in there, PV, PvP, whatever, you'll get standing with them. And you can go to here, and you can get rewards with those uh, points. So, that's something you should know about if you're going to be doing... Uh, what do you call them, uh, faction missions like crazy, don't forget to spend your standing. It'll help make it easier by getting smaller, you know, a little bit more rewards and whatever, and slowly speed up the process over time. And that's pretty much everything to know about factions before you join. So when you're going around in your little city and you're like, okay, should, uh, the, the main story leads you into, all right, join one. And you're like, well, I don't know what to join. Well, uh, that's how to decide if you want to decide based on that. If you're not going to go off the lore, if you just want to know pure power, and uh, like, what do, what do I get out of this? And what does it mean? What's gonna happen from this? Uh, hopefully this quick synopsis uh, explains all the different intricacies, the ins and outs of what it all means, and what happens to joining one faction versus the other. So you can hopefully make your decision without too much hesitation uh, about when it just, you know, gets to this point in the game and it's like, join this, join that, join that. And now you know what it does, what it means. And uh, so you can hopefully decide what faction to join in your game on your server in New World.